ACDC the same year I did. But uh, he's, he's been with Swift for a while, and then uh, now works at Riot. And, oh, actually, I do, I have one more thing, which is Malachi, did you want to come do your announcement? Oh, okay, um. <clears throat> It's related, though, that's why I wrote it. I was going to say, is his name Malachi? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about pizza. Oh, because my, my summoner name is Paul's pizza. Okay, so, um, it kind of conflicts with the tech symposium, sadly. Um, from noon-ish until when it ends, but so probably five. It usually is held here, but we have the League of Legends, quarterly League of Legends tournament for anyone who's interested. Um, it used to be held here, but now there are so many people that they won't fit in here. Last quarter, we had like, people outside. Um, so I actually moved it to the new business building. They have this like huge thing with free projectors. So we're going to be having like spectated games going on. So if at any point, you know, during this tech symposium, you feel like watching some league or playing some league or whatever, we'll be having that. Um, during the intermission, we'll be having a mini like A RAM tournament. So if you want to go play A RAM and possibly like win the RAM, one of those Ramus hats, um, I got one of those when we did the Vault I mean, uh, League of Legends collegiate thing. So that would be the prize if you win the A RAM. That's probably going to be like two or three. <coughs> so yeah. Um, if you're interested, that is up on uh, CPP Esports stuff on their Facebook as well. Um, you can also contact me if you're interested in it. But it'll be on the first from noon to five ish. Please bless the turn. So uh, basically, uh, Gradius uh, works for Riot, and I'm not, I'll, I'll let him talk about what he does and how that relates to what he did here. But uh, I think that, that helped a lot. So, warm welcome. Since you guys are not cool enough to have a clicker, I need to. I'm just grabbing my pizza out of the back. No, no, it's too late. You've you already surrendered that position. Okay. All right, so. Like, like Bunsai said, that's not going to stay there. Like Bunsai said, I'm Jared Gradius. Um, also, I've included both my, my Twitter handles as well as my summer names on League of Legends. Feel free to add me uh, at any point in time. Um, usually, yes, I usually accept all invites until my friends list gets full, which it uh, has and it's really annoying. So, right, please make it bigger. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, feel free to talk to me after as well if you don't get my summoner name. Um, uh, I will definitely add you. I'm always looking for people to play games with. Uh, just as a as an aside, I'm Silver Five, so please don't expect much from me in terms of gameplay. <laughs> uh, okay, um, so first of all, who is Riot? Uh, Riot Games is a video game publisher. Uh, their their main game right now is League of Legends, but. I mean, Riot Games, they're, they're probably producing other games as well, even ones that I don't know about. Um, and they are also a large contributor to open source, including uh, both the Chef Project and OpenCompute. Chef Project is a large project that, that <coughs> enables like automatic deployments and automatic management. Um, and some of our developers have pushed back in the, pushed like, huge changes back into the open source repository. Like literally they have made us one of one of the companies that sits on their board that decides like large changes and stuff that happens. As well as um, we've adopted the open compute hardware um, uh, lineup, which is essentially uh, an open source hardware setup where you pretty much build your own um, servers based on what your needs are. Uh, I believe Facebook and Amazon are also using these. Uh, but it's really cool because when we design these, these servers that are made specifically for the way our game servers and web servers run, we give back to the open community and say, say like, hey, this, this worked really well for us when we need a really high CPU bound uh, database server or something like that. So, um, and what I also included was the Riot Manifesto, which is kind of like the, the core values that, that every writer kind of tries to focus on. Um, the first one, which 
when I started working at Riot, was kind of just like a something they say to make everyone feel good, which is the player first sort of thing. But once I started working there, I realized, you know, Riot is serious about players first. Like, when when a server goes down or when we're, we're implementing new changes, the first thing everyone is asking is, like, how does this affect the players? Like, is it giving them a better gameplay experience? Are they gaining something from it? Um, I was really shocked to see that it was more than just some like stupid mantra or phrase that people repeat just saying like, oh yeah, players first, uh, and not actually implement it, but they do. Um, the second one is challenge convention. Um, a lot of things that go on around Riot, like people say, oh, you can't get 250,000 people on this single shot. Like, it's not possible. Like, there was one point in time where our game engineers said, you know, we're running out of space on these game servers. Like, in EU West, we're literally pushing 90% capacity all the time. That's why EU West is dead all the time. <laughs> um, so, uh, a few months back, the game engineers said, you know, we're, we're pushing about 150,000 people per shard, and we think we can push it up to 300,000 safe. So they just said, you know what, people don't think we can do it, let's, let's do some code changes and let's code test it, see what happens. And Within the next few months, we were doubling our capacity per server. Just because somebody said, I know we can do better than what we've done. So, um, focus on talent and team. Uh, I have no clue how I got to write. <laughs> no. uh, but, but seriously, um, it seems like every single person we hire is smarter than the previous group of people we hired. Like, um, for example, game engineers, when they apply for a job at Riot, they have to do a presentation in front of all the other game engineers like something, something cool they've worked on or some idea that they have. And one of the newest game engineers that's coming in to do a presentation has, has done ridiculous amounts of research and white papers on, on AI and problem solving. So these people, like literally every day I'm meeting a person that's 10 times smarter than me. And being in this environment, I've learned so much just from the amount of ridiculous talent we have, right? Um, take play seriously. This is also something else that I thought was a, like, oh yeah, we're, we're a video game company, we play video games, we take it seriously. But when I got into Riot, literally, like, every day they're saying, hey, go ahead, spend an hour and play League of Legends. Like, just go play it. On, not, in, not as a lunch break or anything, literally on your work time. Go and play League of Legends with the community. So, once I saw that, like, like, I walk into, into the off room at 12.30 and there's like five or six people playing a ramp together. I'm like, wow, this, they really need to play video games in New York. So, as well as another initiative they did um, back in the beginning of December where um, they announced that one of our new benefits would be we get $300 a year to spend on video games. Like, anything. As long as it's a new game that you're, it's, it's, it's not video game systems, but like new software. And Literally, all you have to do is say, okay, cool, I spent $50 here, write off your receipt, and then kind of do a, hey, this is what's cool about this game. Like, they want us to do market research about, like, what's cool and up and coming in the video game. <laughs> so, that's another really, really sweet benefit that ties into the game play seriously. And the last one, which is one of the most important, which a lot of, which is surprising that actually exists, so, right, is, is staying humble and staying humble. These people are some of the best in the industry. Like we've hired CSOs and CTOs of companies that have dropped, literally cut their pay to a third or half of what they were doing so they could be a game engineer to do what they wanted to do. But they were like, this is what I want to do. You guys are awesome. Let's let me start wherever I need to start. So everyone, everyone there is super smart, but they're not like like I've met a couple people uh, doing interviews from people that work at like Microsoft and Adobe and stuff like that. And during the interview process, there we would, we would talk to them, oh, what have you done? And they would get really, really like boasty. They would start like pumping themselves up to like that they were better than everyone else that, that they were working with and they want to move up. And they're just like, your, your attitude's kind of not cool. So, so everybody, everybody at Riot is super smart and super hard. So. And how did I get here? Because the whole talent thing, yeah, I got here in a car. There were lots of traffic. Yeah, the one thing I didn't realize coming from 
from being in Pomona and living on campus and being able to walk everywhere. LA sucks. <laughs> Traffic is horrendous. Like, I live about technically 20 minutes from Riot, so I should be able to make it there in 20 minutes. My morning commute is about an hour and 10 minutes every day <laughs> because of the 405. But anyway, what I really meant is, how did I get to Riot? Um, the first one was Swift. Uh, you guys are obviously here. Uh, Swift through events, through working on the e-board, um, meeting people uh, in, in the community, in the open source community and the security community was great, as well as the defining factor that actually got me into Riot. I was with, with the Swift group during um, the SoCal Linux uh, uh, okay. Expo? Expo. Expo. That's what he did. Um, and Riot had a booth there, and I happened to have my resume. And I met one. Of the, I met the director of operations, and literally walked up to him and said, "Here's my resume. Please hire me. Like, I need a job there. I want to work there." And if it wasn't for going to scale with Swift, I would have never even had that opportunity to introduce myself to anyone. Um, okay, go ahead. The next one is CCDC. Um, I'm sure Zach talks about CCDC a fair amount. Um, it's sort of easy. What CCDC? <laughs> it is the Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. Yes, I know I heard it. Um, I was I started as a Windows admin security dude. Um, what was it? My second year, second year at Cal Poly, and then each year after that, I came back um, as part of the Windows team. And this was literally like my my bread and butter training to get into the security industry. It was pretty much everything I deal with now is what I did at CCDC. Like, oh, your Windows server's busted. Okay, well, let's do everything I ever did during CCDC to see how this person got in and what they did. Like, it's the most applicable thing I took away from Cal Poly. Uh, school and everything else aside, like classes and programming and all that was, was nothing compared to what I learned at CCDC. Um, so that was, but if you have the opportunity to do it and you're interested in doing any sort of information security related um, position, please do so because it is the best thing you will ever do at Capital. And video games. Um, obviously, you want to work at a video game company. If you play video games and you're like, hey, I'm going to go design video games. Like That's why I started at Cal Poly as a computer science major. I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to program video games and make tons of money and do what I love to do. And I realized I didn't want to program video games because it's not as glamorous as, as it's made up to be until you were like really, until you worked your way there, like you start out as a tester playing a single level for 80 hours a week <laughs> and hating your life. So, I moved more towards the, the information security industry and said, you know, network security is really fun and, and it gives me that, that challenge to always keep like, learning and keep doing new things because the, the landscape is always changing for security. There's always somebody finding some other way into your network. Um, but once I saw, like I said, once I saw Riot at, at scale, I was like, oh my god, this is perfect. Like, this is the combination of two loves. Like, Video games and infosec. So they just my passion for for wanting to not be where to play video games helped me get there. <laughs> and then also the last one and one of the most important is curiosity and realizing that I'm a complete noob when it comes to any of this stuff. Like there are people on my security team who have worked for Rapid Seven and Boeing and just countless other security security firms that, like, every day I'm learning something new. There's uh, one of our guys that works works remote out of, of out of Texas, and literally everything I've learned about network application testing has come from him. Like, I've, I've gone out and learned a lot on my own, but he's, like, my, I guess, mentor in terms of, like, in terms of really learning the deep, deep dive of things. But I would have never gone out and asked him for help unless I realized, you know, I don't know anything about this, and I really want to learn. So, so taking the the idea that you know I am a sponge for information, but I need somebody to teach me. Like realizing, being humble, that and knowing you don't know. Anything. I don't remember what the next. Oh yeah, programming. <laughs> and also just a just a, a really quick one is is the computer side computer science side of things where. 
I was always trying to find solutions for, for problems through just coding through Python and Java and whatnot. Like, like literally, somebody says, "Hey, we need this. To, we need this system to let us know when when this game server's down. Can you write us something for it?" And bam, 20 minutes later, I have a crappy Python script that does it. <laughs> but but what's what's really cool is like that started through hanging out on IRC and somebody was like, "Hey, it'd be cool if you had a bot that did this." And then I spent years and years and years writing IRC bots. <laughs> so, so just just the, the always seeking for something something cool to do and, and tinkering and playing with stuff. I mean, still last week I was playing with my IRC bot, just like changing stuff around. And I'm always, I mean, I think I've remade my my chat bot repo six times on GitHub. <laughs> so that shows how many times I'm always like changing stuff up and. Always trying to make it better, which it never will. So, and and by the way, if you guys have any questions at all, like at any point in time, please interrupt me and ask because that will help my presentation seem longer. <laughs> so, all right. So what do like? Let's get into details. What do I do? Right. Um, the first thing is network scanning and automation of that task. Um, Riot has networks in. Let's see, Santa Monica, El Segundo. Las Vegas, uh, Korea, Dublin, New York, Miami, like everywhere. And that's a problem for network security because things are always popping up. And things are always being created and taken down. So when we're trying to get an idea for our network footprint and like what's actually on the internet, what's an attackable surface, it's a big challenge. So I've, I've actually worked a lot with some of our network scanning tools we have as well as creating automated um, automated systems for, for saying, hey look, there's a new instance in the Amazon cloud. Let's add that to our scanning our scanning list and, and report out emails if something's open on the internet. Like one of my first jobs was, hey, can we know if there are like common ports open to the internet that shouldn't be? And literally I, I ran the scan and I found 200 and something Windows boxes with almost no firewall facing the internet. Which is not a good thing. Windows boxes should never be facing the internet without a firewall. So, yeah. No, why not? Is yeah. Windows secure? Windows is secure, <laughs> but <laughs> everything should be behind it. Um, so, so in the end, I ended up saving us like a ton of work from being like, hey, if somebody found that before we did, <laughs> GG. So. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the first one was, was automation. Um, the next thing I mentioned was intrusion detection. So knowing when we've actually when our systems have actually been pumped. Um, we have a lot of we have a lot of um, monitoring on all of our game servers, web servers, database servers, and, and everything. But it started off as literally just like, hey, look, that database server is down. Why the hell did that database server go down? It's like off peak and no one's logged on. And we log on and find out there's somebody logged on as root from a Korean IP. <laughs> that's not good. So, that's, so that's how they win, right? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how they win. <laughs> so, so through showing the company that hey, internet intrusions are a big deal. Like you could like lose your database. Um, they've gotten much more aware of like hey, we need to actually detect this before it gets too bad. How often does that happen? Um. Yes. <laughs> so it's it's actually intrusions aren't a huge thing, especially recently. But in the past, I mean, there have been news reports on on riots databases being being leaked. Like uh, I have a I have an image to an article uh, that I'll show you in a second that shows that. <laughs> so, next one. Um, secure programming and code review. Uh, people like are always releasing web apps. There's there's always some new like esports site or the beta.leagueoflegends.com and before we, well, hopefully, before we release it to the internet, it goes through our team in, in terms of like checking to make sure like random web plugins aren't enabled so people can do cross-site scripting through comments, that sort of thing. Um, as well as just making sure our business logic is sane in terms of like, hey, if somebody triggers an error on this website, how much information does it get back? Like, does it tell them, hey, we're, rel we're, we're running Drupal 4. Point whatever, or like, making sure that the, the web programmers know what is smart and what shouldn't be done.
done and what should be done on the internet in terms of moving from testing to a production environment. And then along with, with secure, uh, secure coding is, is application testing and web testing. So, so along with teaching them how to set things up and how to code, we, we also test uh, game applications that are going out, like for example, the League of Legends client. Uh, one of the first jumps into application <coughs> testing that I did, we were getting a lot of reports from players saying, hey, people are stealing my IP from League of Legends client. So from, from that report, we probably spent about a month's worth of time reverse engineering the client, not, not taking any of the source code, because we did have access to source code, but we wanted to see like where a, a hacker would get in. So we spent about a month's worth of analysis on going through the league client and making sure nobody, like there wasn't information being revealed that shouldn't be revealed. In the end, we ended up catching a couple couple ways people were using like map hacks and like seeing through the Fox War and League of Legends. So definitely learning the, the lower levels of, of applications and how they run and data that goes back and forth and lots of wire shark. <laughs> And security, oh, ah, that's ambiguous. Um, one, of, uh, one of the most recent things I've been working on is, I mentioned that I do a lot of the network scanning and automation, but um, one thing I'm working on now is taking all of the scan information that we have and aggregating it to a central uh, web application where people can say, okay, on July 5th, what web ports were open on this IP and that sort of thing. And, just doing, essentially writing applications get, that give security information for Riot internally, so so they can know whether their IP was was dangerously facing the internet or not. Um, also planning on integrating that with our network scanner, so somebody can say, "Hey, I just spun up this Amazon instance. Can you can you run a quick like nmap scan on it?" Um, which is really cool because uh, doing a lot of this in Ruby on Rails, so I'm learning a lot in terms of, of web development and having a lot of fun with it. And last and certainly not least, where most of my 80 hour weeks come from is incident response. Um, you can go ahead and go to the next one. Uh, yes. Wow, that's not what I meant for that to do, but okay. Um, so literally, two days after I got hired, this happened. Like, I started and the first thing I hear is, oh, our League of Legends EU database was popped. Like, they were able to exfiltrate hundreds of gigabytes of data without us knowing. Like, oh, they got our entire player database. And this is two days after I started. So I'm like, okay, this is gonna be a real fun place to work. Um, but what, what ended up happening is the, the task force that was behind this um, immediately went out to the players and said, hey, our, our database was breached. Please change your passwords. We're really sorry about this. This is not going to happen. And then immediately, we reviewed all of the database security, OS and um, database related. Um, things were encrypted with a much stronger form of encryption. And literally from that point on, Riot realized security is a huge deal, which was, which was cool for me to start then, because my job was, was fairly well secured even as an intern. So, um, and the next one is, yes, yes. DDoSs. Um, one of my longest work days was from Tuesday, yeah, from Tuesday at 2 a.m. until Thursday at 10 p.m., I believe. Um, my, my manager called me up and said, hey, you need to come back to the office. Um, this, was, this was after we were investigating uh, potential DDoS threats, and I, I was at the office until probably about midnight, and I just got home, literally falling asleep, my boss called me, and he's like, hey, you need to come back to the office, you're flying out to Miami in two hours. I'm like, wait, what? what? I just got home, and he's like, yeah, well, now the DDoS, the DDoSers are hitting our Brazilian platform, and we need to stop it. So, from back to my house, to the office, flying out of LAX at 5 a.m., <coughs> got to Miami, Helped the NetEng people set up um, new hardware that we were transporting. Uh, I ended up having to bring 
$250,000 of networking equipment through LAX, which is somewhat terrifying because I have a box that probably weighs about as much as me, and I'm carrying it through LAX, and people are like, why the hell are you bringing this through, like, carry-on? Shouldn't you stowing this? I'm like, this is a very, very important box. And they're like, can we look at this very important box? And I'm like, you can open it, but we can't run it through X-Way, or you can't, we can't do any of this. And they're like, trying to tell that to, to LAX security, was like, oh, yeah. here, I have a giant bomb. Please don't let me on the plane. But I have to get on the plane, like, seriously. So, so working through that was fun. Um, Probably every single person that got on the plane asked me why I had a seat for my box. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to know why I would pay thousands of dollars to sit next to a box, and I said, this is a very important box. I love this box. <laughs> and that, that, that usually got them to keep walking. Was it first class? It was first class. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that was one of those, oh my god, we need to fix this problem now. Here, Jared, you're, you're, you're the intern. Go fly on a plane. How do you buy a ticket for a bomb? You literally say it's another person. Like, that's that's when, when I got to the airport, I was like, oh god, I need an ID for my box. Like, I need a driver's license for my box. So I said, okay, let's hope this works. And I scanned my, my driver's license twice, and I was on the plane with my box. <laughs> into Miami, had to figure out how to get a taxi to a data center that's like unmarked. And I'm like, okay, here's the address. Do you have any idea where this is? And he's like, no, but we can try. <laughs> so made my way to the data center, uh, uh, hung out there with the only other network engineer that was there at the time, pretty much sat around and said, here, let's, let's hook up this equipment and see if it stops. And the Brazilian platform went back up, every, everybody was happy, and then suddenly everything went down again. We're like, oh god, what happened? And then we realized we misconfigured this important box. So, so that, it was probably about two or three days of, of that platform going up and down, and people were like, um, we really want to play League of Legends, like, why do you do this to us? And at first they were really angry, because the group that was DDoSing us was very vocal on Twitter. Like they were like, ha ha ha, look, League of Legends is down again. Like we did that. And at first everybody was pissed off at the, the DDoSers. And then about two or three days into it, they they turned on us and they said, what, is Riot Games so incompetent they can't fight off two or three DDoSers? When behind the scenes it's literally like hundreds of thousands of computers on a botnet hitting us. But that's that's something we have to manage is the expectations of the players saying like, yes, we're working on this 24-7. We promise we'll fix it. So it's something I didn't expect. Working with a company that that serves over 30 million players, like this one change that I do could potentially affect hundreds of thousands of people, and it's it's a big thing, especially when you're when you're doing incident response. Because if you say, okay, we need to take down this game server, it's been owned, and you take down a game server during peak time. Like hundreds of thousands of people will be kicked off the platform, and you're losing millions of hours of gameplay through those through those people that you kicked off. So there's a lot of cause and effect and and thought that has to go through something before before you make any ra uh, rash decisions. Like the the contrast to that, where where my knowledge didn't transfer was CCDC. When we were when we were being attacked in CCDC, we took things down, we re the servers, we disconnected the network. Like, it doesn't work that way when you're, when you're serving hundreds of thousands of people. You make people very angry when you do things like that. <laughs> and especially when you have a public forum where people can be angry publicly, yeah, that's, that can be a problem. Take that down Sometimes that happens. So, okay, what is cool about Riot? I actually don't like my slides, so we're not gonna, no, we're not gonna use <laughs> I don't know how to computer. Uh, Firefox, I hate you. Okay, cool. Sorry, there's actually a, a, a career site that has like all the benefits of, of working at Riot. And it's not, it's not under the careers tab? No, it's not under the careers tab because that, that will bring you to probably the right place. 
but no, I don't think so. All right, I'm not even gonna waste my time right now. Um, so what's cool about Riot? Like I mentioned, like they're a bunch of just really smart gamers. Like everybody, pretty much everybody, there you go. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so uh, perks, Maybe control um, plus everybody that, that works at Riot is a gamer. They're really enthusiastic about what they do. And they're just all generally super smart. So you're learning stuff, you're enjoying, like, I can't think of a day where I thought, oh god, I have to go to work. Like, every day I love going to work, and it's, it's the best thing you can have. Um, and then just like the general, like, actual basic, like, like uh, perks that you get. Uh, competitive salary, 401k is awesome at Riot, like they match up to like 10% of your deposit or something. So that's really sweet. Um, there's a gym on the Riot campus that's that's subsidized for rioters and their significant others. So like this gym is normally like $65 a month or something, or even more than that, and it's like only $20 for rioters. As well as like you're working next to a huge food cafe central area, so no worry about having to having to find somewhere to eat. How long did you intern there before you I was there for three months and then um, that, that was, at least that was my, my internship like uh, declared on the contract and then they kept me for another month as an intern because they said hey yeah we like you and then after that they were like yeah we're gonna have to do it. So it was the the biggest um, issue that they had when I when I applied for a full-time position was that I was applying out of college with pretty much zero um, industry experience. They were like you really want to make sure you're a good fit and Yep. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Uh, the, the play fund that I told you about, where we get $300 a year to pretty much buy whatever video games we want. Um, as well as, I love you, there we go. Uh, flexible hours. Like, literally, I work 10 to 7, but last week I said, hey, yeah, I'm doing a presentation on, uh, at, my, at my school. And like, yeah, sure, go for it. Like, take the day off. It was that easy. There was no like filling out forms saying like I sign up for this PTO at this hour to this hour, and it's completely flexible. Um, I get in. I usually get into work about 8 a.m. every morning, play games for two hours, <laughs> end up streaming for about two hours, and then around 10:30, 11, I start work. And it's. I mean, as long as you get what you're supposed to get done, nobody really notices one way or the other. Um, uh, there's a lot of. What are we looking at? Oh, education, yeah, that's 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 going. <laughs> um, there's a lot of cool projects that that Riot does, um, such as their their Taste the Riot and their Thunderdome projects. Um, Thunderdome is probably one of the coolest things I've done there, where they essentially sit you in a room for for 36 hours and they say, "Go make a project." Like for 36 hours, you get to spend that time on whatever you want to make a project. And we've um, for example, the, the ARAM map that everybody loves so much, that's from Thunderdome. Like, that was made in 36 hours. Um, there have been so many ideas that have actually spawned into something that reaches the community from there, uh, as well as character designs, um, new skins. Um, my first Thunderdome project, we actually worked on, on debugging and automated testing for the game server, which was cool, because literally we threw our game server code into our tester that we wrote, and it would just sit there and throw bogus data at it until it crashed. But we actually ended up finding two different ways that people were sending data back to the game servers to crash it in the games. They're just like, hey, cool, here you go. That's how you fix that. So, um, and the second one I did was a chat bar, because if any of you play League of Legends and you join those general like public chat rooms where everybody gets at, at level one and you can just join in and talk to people, it's horrendous. And it's still horrendous. But um, what our chatbot is going to be doing is going through these rooms and picking up people who are trying to scam to steal your account, uh, people who are spamming links, people who are generally toxic. Like it, it works with the player behavior team, and we're using it to make those chat rooms usable again instead of the cesspool of garbage that they are right now. What if you like a cesspool? Um, then uh, there's always four chance. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> yeah, there's Facebook too. Um, but that's more like family central, it says pool, which is so fun. <laughs> Um, like I said, also playing League of Legends every day, um, playing company playtests, like before uh, characters and new maps are announced to the general public, uh, as a company we get to play them. So like the, the new ARAM map, Howling Abyss, we've been playing for about three or four months just saying like, this is cool, this is cool. But what's also really cool is the designers will sometimes only select certain people to test up. Like if any of you are familiar with um, with some of the Easter eggs on the on the Howling Abyss map, uh, like the Poros, the little fluffy things <coughs> that hop around, like that whole Easter egg where you feed them and they grow bigger, was completely unknown to everybody. Like it was one of those things that, that they snuck in and then that rioters are like, whoa, this is a really cool feature. <laughs> so so there's, there's the ability to try stuff before other players get to play it, but at the same time be surprised by, by simple things that make League of Legends very um, yes, uh, the one thing on the bottom is the, the air on chairs. Like, I, I read this when I was applying for Riot, and I was like, what the hell, like, chairs? Like, those are cool? And then I got to, I got to Riot, and I'm like, oh my god, this is the most comfortable office chair I've ever had in my entire life. Um, and my friend went to go, he, he visited me last week uh, at the office, and he sat in this chair, and he's like, I want one of these for gaming. And then he called me up two days later, he's like, I hate you. I'm like, why? He's like, these chairs are fourteen hundred dollars. I'm like, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, it, what's what's funny is um, during the during like the dot com boom, so many companies bought these chairs because Web was making a ridiculous amount of money. And then when when the bubble burst, like the company was just like, ah, we're getting rid of these chairs. Like hundreds of companies just dumped these chairs, and then other people picked them up. So, uh, let's see, what other cool. Oh yeah, uh, vending machines are all subsidized, like all sodas in there are 25 cents. Um, we have the glass bottle Mexican Cokes now, after I bought the facilities for about two months. I was like, I was like, we need this guy, we need this, and now we have them in the vending machine for 50 cents. Um, we have snacks, uh, those automatic coffee making machines, um, tea, every, pretty much everything you need for Riot to keep you there without you realizing, hey, I'm at work for two extra hours. <laughs> so it's it's just, it's a really great place to work because you have all these amenities, you have all these really cool people, and you're doing something that a lot of people enjoy, and, and that's producing League of Legends. So, um, I don't think my presentation had anything, I know I'm sure my presentation didn't have anything else. So, uh, is there any other questions? Anything, I mean, literally anything you want to ask about League of Legends. I am under NDA, so I can only say so much. So, how did you get past the stigma of not having any experience? Um, it was uh, it was a challenge because when during my interview process, like I, I was talking to these people and I realized they really liked me, but when they said, hey, what have you done in the past? Like, I literally had, I said, oh yeah, I worked on campus IT and did this, but uh, what I did was um, the security team that was actually hiring me, I showed them, I said like, hey, I'm literally at home all the time tinkering with, with security and like, I just got done getting a Gen 2 install working on Power PC. Like, just stupid things showing that like, I enjoy what I do and that I have passion for it. And I talked to a couple of my coworkers after my whole interview and internship process and they said, yeah, there were a couple people that, that were thumbs down on your hiring just based on your experience, but we fought for you because we saw that you had passion for what you did. So just really showing like like going the extra mile beyond just going to class and being going to a club every week, like showing like, hey, I was involved with this club, I did this competition, I have a public GitHub with this code on it. Even like literally my GitHub has my chatbot and some other stupid projects on it, but the fact that I had a GitHub and the fact that I was doing those projects was enough to show that I liked what I did. Guys, we're actually uh, out of time, oh. so...